we end this program with a very grand sonata, Opus 22, B flat major. Again, it's on, on a grand scale, it's in, in four movements. And this is, a, this is a real virtuoso piece, probably intended for, for his own purposes, uh, for performances in, in the great Viennese palaces. And it starts like this. Position. Again, it starts with an upbeat. It's, it's, it's allegro con brio, so it's, it's a very vigorous allegro. Uh, it's not a tempo ordinario. If, if Beethoven would, would just write allegro, then it's, it's a normal tempo, but this is vigorous. And this upbeat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's very difficult. Uh, this this note is tenuto, and the one, two are staccatos. So, and then there is this, uh, like, like a snare drum. And this is already like a motive. And then it, it runs through the whole movement. Um, the previous sonatas were very chamber music, like we spoke often of string quartets. This is really orchestral. This is, this is brilliant, and it's on a large scale, and everything is orchestrated, and we can hear, uh, really, the, the full orchestra and the tutti's, and so let's just play a little more. Again, yum, pum, pum, pum. In earlier sonatas, we spoke of, of the Mannheim rocket. This is again an example of the Mannheim rocket, like we had in London. Or a yum. So, yum. Unison, it's, it's rhetorical and it's speaking. Then, then the bass takes over. This is a wonderful passage. And we are, we are on the V 
vexel dominant, the dominant of the dominant. So, and again, look at this passage. <laughs> Is a, a revolutionary piano technique. I mean, nobody before Beethoven used figurations like that. Very difficult, unfortunately. But. And then the sudden forzandi, and then. It's pianissimo. So again, the, also the dynamics in this sonata are extreme. You have from pianissimo to, to fortissimo. And in the earlier sonatas, what, what we heard before, the dynamics were on, on a much more uh, normal or modest level. Um, <laughs> comes the second theme, but again in unison. And here I must speak about the connection with, with, with the other great B-flat major sonata. The Hammerklavier Opus 106. And this is to me like, like, a, like a fourth study for the Hammerklavier sonata, because there are really important connections. Uh, you, when, when we get to the Hammer Club, we will speak about it, but, but it's, it's very important that it's, be, it's built on thirds. Everything is in third. For example, the fugue. And you can go, it's a, so here in this opus 22 we have already an interval of the third and then the melody goes in thirds. And then gets a little insecure here. Then comes a very virtuoso concertante passage. Extroverted here, the music then. And then you hear this tremolo. This is a, this is a timpani roll. Again, like in the previous sonata, the constant changes of major and minor. Napolitan coloring of the F, F and G flat and again look at the thirds it's a really pure hammer clavier sonata then development section is quite interesting. Uh, we stop on this dominant of G minor. And now comes something quite intricate and full of imitations. When we had this 
quite uh, in, a, in a positive sense primitive theme. Yum. anything but primitive because you, you, you have the ascending version in the bass and the descending one in the soprano here. And again, it's this motif. So everything together. is happening we have we have this this drum motif and arpeggi but one should really follow the bass line how the bass is descending always always lower and lower and it gets more and more uh, mysterious <laughs> motive is suddenly which he shows it in, in a totally different light and uh, uh, the semi quaver dominant and so we have again 17 bars of dominant and he closes this on a fermata it's the last time that he will ever do something like that to to stop on a fermata before a recapitulation and uh, So, the recapitulation is, is quite uh, traditional. There are no, no major surprises here. The second movement is adagio con gran espressione. Again, not a tempo ordinario, but something quite, quite extraordinary. Very operatic, very Italian. It's in the time signature of, of 9-8, so... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. And you, you should think of the adagio in, in units of three. So if you beat a very slow three, one, two, three, four, five, six, then comes the theme. It's in 9-8 and the dynamics are pianissimo and again it's like almost a contradiction in terms because con gran espressione and yet you have to be very expressive in pianissimo so it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, again I, I talked before about Beethoven the, the master of legato and here you have again a legato slur of eight bars long something that no violinist would play on one bow. It's impossible, but you have to think in one bow, in one line. 
And then the expression of, of this music is something really a novelty. In, in, you have to think in terms of what, what kind of music we had at, at that time. And, and Beethoven brought something really new into music, and I would call that gravity. And the, the, the sheer weight of this music. <laughs> important to always to, to keep this pulse of of the nine eight you can hear yom pom 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 and ab above that the melody can be free and, and expressive i think that's the the idea of uh, what later chopin and liszt used as, as tempo rubato but what we already see that in mozart and mozart said that he didn't like when Clementi's two hands were always together. So this is what he means that he... Rom, pom, 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 pom. Grand expression and this sospiri, these sighing motifs. Um, then this adagio is in sonata form. It's it's on a, on a huge scale. Uh, the exposition finishes. <laughs> pulsation of, of the nine eights yum, pom, pom. and this is really mysterious and and the the harmony is it's really extraordinary even in 2005 today <laughs> this is so dissonant Just, just a fragment from the main theme. Yum. And then using this fragment and taking even smaller fragments from, from it. Threshold, the dominant. Crescendo. Subito pianissimo. And the return. the Lydian the 
that's beautiful. Yes. So the third movement is relatively lighter because uh, we had a huge symphonic first movement and, and the slow movement of the greatest gravity. Now comes something quite Haydn-esque. <laughs> simple four bars, eight bars phrases, but even here nothing is ever so innocent. You know? This G flat is a, just a little uh, knife in the back. And then the second part, again something quite new and revolutionary. You know? It's like very orchestra, like an orchestral tremolo. <laughs> yes. And then this, the trio section of this minuet is quite dramatic. And uh, I just finish the main part and go into the trio. Hammer Clavier Sonata and the third, see, you hear the third. Well, those are the, the main notes and then. Stole this a little bit in, in his humoresque. <laughs> and uh, so this is the minuet, and then this sonata finishes with a beautiful rondo, allegretto, so not a fast movement. It is a little bit like, like the last movement of the, of the spring sonata. <laughs> the Opus 7 Sonata. So this one goes like that. singing style and uh, again this this technique of, of playing octaves in legato it's very new for Beethoven <laughs> and then the, the inner voice is here beautiful the first transition theme. The 
counterpoint is extraordinary and how he inverts the counterpoint, what, what was a bass and the, and the soprano line, and then, then they change places. And then comes something concertante. <laughs> the fragments of the theme and uh, imitating this is also very Beethovenian and using just duplets then triplets then then semiquavers and then um, then comes something quite important. Yeah. We heard this theme quite innocently before. And now in the minor and dramatic. something like like a like a toccata quite mysterious and and very exciting it's a wonderful way of writing for the piano so really only a very great pianist can think of something like that and then this sounds quite Hungarian, but I'm partial here. <laughs> yeah, so it's a rum. and. Uh, Fugato, or a, or a like a, like a fake fugato, because he doesn't follow it through. Hungarian. And then suddenly changes the atmosphere in the bass back to. <laughs> this is wonderful because it's like a written out trill, but it, it somehow he smuggles in the, the theme without any preparation. <laughs> Gives the theme to the viola and the cello. Oh. And then the first violin takes over. I think that's in a string quartet. All people are equal, but then the first violin still gets to lead. C'est la vie. Very 
variations. And then just uh, to mention the coda, because again it relates to the minuets trio. <laughs> That's Opus 22, and I think that's about everything I can say to you about at the moment. Thank you very much.